and we have Randy Brooks on the line. Good morning, uh, Randy. How are you? I'm fine, Ken. How are you? It sounds silly to say good morning again, but we have to do that because there are other people joining us right now. We've had a delightful little talk. I found out an awful lot about you just before we even came on the air. Yeah, some deadly information, huh? Well, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you, I think you're uh, you're very good. Your name's not, in all honesty, not a household word yet, but by golly, it's getting there, isn't it? Slowly but surely. Yeah. Hopefully after the Super Bowl show that came on, a few more million people will have known it. That was called The Last Precinct. Right. And uh, this, I only caught it once, but then you tell me it's only been on once. Right. It won't air until March when we'll have a regular uh, schedule, either Friday or Saturday, it looks like. You know, it's hard to do anything that's considered a first, but as far as I know, you are the first actress to play a transsexual on television. I believe that's true, at least in prime time. Mm -hmm. so. How long have you been in the acting game? I started uh, about, it'll be four years this July. And before that you were into modeling. Mm -hmm. Before that I did that for nine years. Mm -hmm. I had a call earlier from somebody, and I hope they give us a call. I have a hunch they might. <laughs> this person called earlier this morning and said, I went to school with Randy Brooks. That's great. So we're going to invite... Uh, you don't mind if we take a phone call or two? No, absolutely not. That'd be fun. During the course of this. 829-2345 is our number. You have a... Uh, I don't want to sound chauvinistic by saying this. You have a gorgeous body. Thank you. And... Um, <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't know if that's a help or a hindrance. Is it as far as acting is concerned? Well, um, for me it's been so far because I've done a lot of things that require a nice, attractive body. Um, I think that... As I get older, I'll start to downplay that a little bit more and start to take a little bit more dramatic roles. But for me, that's, it's really been an easy access into modeling and acting. So it's, it's kind of helped at this point. Mm -hmm. People have seen you in The Man with Two Brains, mm -hmm. Steve Martin film, Tightrope, that was with Clint Eastwood. Right. And uh, gosh knows how many other films. You're that. Uh, all the pictures that they've literally seen me in, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, in fact, there we had a... a a good glimpse of uh, what you have to offer. Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Does that bother you? I uh, I was starting to tell you this just before we came on. Uh, there was a thing on Cinemax the other night called Love Stories, and I was watching Jamie Lee Curtis. Right. And I got to thinking about her mother, uh, Janet Lee, back in the days of Psycho. And we saw love scenes portrayed then, but she's portraying them certainly differently than... Uh, than they did even back in the 60s. That's true. Does it bother you to take your clothes off in front of a camera? Well, as we talked about it before a little bit, um, I grew up with parents who had a real healthy attitude about my mind, my body, my emotions, all being a part of the same package. And in growing up, I was an only child, and nudity was something that we never hid from each other. It was uh, not that we ran around the house naked, but if I happened to be walking from the bedroom to the shower and didn't have clothes on, I certainly wouldn't run and hide from my parents or vice versa. So it was something that we were always taught was just a real healthy part of your being. So I was never embarrassed about my body because I've always kept it in good shape and I've always felt like there was nothing to hide about it. You have nothing to be ashamed of, my, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. So <laughs> that didn't bother me. And, and I had some considerations the first time I did a picture and I had to have some of my clothing off and I thought, well, what are my parents going to say? But surprisingly, after my, my mom and dad saw it, my dad called me up the next morning and said, you know, I was really proud of your acting, and the truth is that your mom and I must have been having one heck of a fantasy the night we created you. And I thought that was the sweetest thing he could have said. Mm -hmm. okay. If you had your choice, would you rather act with your clothes on or with off? Absolutely, with them on. <laughs> I think that, that any actress, that's her desire, and I've done the majority of the things that I've done have been with my clothes on. I think the things that stand out in a lot of people's minds is the other. You know, the male with two brains, the tightrope, that type thing. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is, in so many cases, I was telling you this too, uh, just in the couple minutes we had a chat, you see a movie and so many times it's, it's the female that has to disrobe and even though there's a love scene portrayed, many times you never really get a glimpse of, uh, of the man. True. Maybe we're fortunate <laughs> in that regard, uh, but I just keep, it's not really fair. You know, I wonder if it goes through an actress's mind several times. Well, gee, I got to disrobe for this scene again, while the guy never really has to uh, has to do that. That's true. A lot of times, guys are hidden under the bed and they have their shorts on, so that's not fair. But uh, I think, like I was telling you earlier, Nick Nolte did a really cute job in Down and Out in Beverly Hills. And if you haven't seen it, that's a it's a great movie. Yeah. He does a real cute scene where he takes his clothes off and kind of 
he makes it sort of a pun because he laughs and, and hops around on one foot trying to get his clothes back on. So he does it in a real humorous way as opposed to it being a sexual hook. What was that movie that, uh, I can't think, was it Escape from Alcatraz that Clint Eastwood did? Yes. There was one where he also, you saw his backside as he walked away from the camera. I think it was, there was a time when in order to get into the pictures, maybe people had to uh, do those kind of roles. And then later on, you didn't expect anybody like, uh, well, like a Joan Collins, for instance, somebody who's really made it to, uh, to ever reveal too much of themselves. Yeah, I think those are, those are pretty old standards. I think today people are really loosening up. I mean, if you look back 20 years ago, it wasn't popular to live together. Now, you know, people don't even think about that anymore. It's yeah. the general rule. Or you go back to the early days of Hollywood when, uh, well, like, and it happened one night with uh, Claudette, uh, Claudette Colbert. Yeah. And uh, Clark, Gable. Clark Gable were in the same bedroom together. <gasps> And, of course, you always had to have twin beds. You could never be in the bed together unless the actor had one foot on the floor, I think. Exactly. Lucy and Ricky never got to sleep in the same bed together. Yeah. So times have changed. I wonder if we're getting a little bit more conservative, though. Uh, if the pendulum is starting to swing back a little bit. Do you get any indication of that in Hollywood? I think it is, slowly but surely. You'd be surprised, especially with the scare of AIDS and everything else. We're doing a lot less love scenes and a lot less uh, even kissing on screen, which is actually real nice. Because I think that it, it got overboard for a while. Mm -hmm. People thought that the only way they could sell a movie was with sex. Yeah. Think back a little bit. It's 12 minutes after 10 o'clock. We're talking with Randy Brooks. 829-2345 is our number. We'll be right back. The more you watch, the more you'll know. On the spot, behind the scenes, we're the news of 19, working hard, so you're in touch with the world. Hello, I'm Bob Hetherington. In the past months, we've held towns meetings with area mayors to assess the future of their communities and with local educators to discuss our children's schools. In tonight's meeting, we'll talk with Tony Green, president of UAW Local 974, about the upcoming contract talks with Caterpillar. The success or failure of these negotiations will have an immense impact on all of us. For the inside story on one of the heart of Illinois' most important issues, watch the WHOI Towns Meeting with Tony Green tonight at 7 p.m. on TV19. Been invited to any celebrations lately? Not many, you say? Well, consider yourself invited to the big celebration going on now, announcing the grand opening of a new Z-Bart Center conveniently located at Route 9, a half mile east of Veterans Parkway, to ensure your car's protection. And right now, get grand opening savings on all Z-Bart services. For example, save $60 on Z-Bart rust protection, just $199 during their grand opening. It's proven on millions of vehicles worldwide, professionally applied by trained technicians. Of course, the Z-Bart Lifetime Limited warranties are good for the life of your new car. Your Z-Bart dealer has all the details, so stop in today and join the savings at Z-Bart, Route 9, a half mile east of Veterans Parkway. Phone 662-RUST for an appointment today. Let's go back. Uh, Randy, want to take a phone call or two? Let me see if we can get somebody on the ear. I'm sure that's okay. Good morning. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Yes, go ahead, please. I was the one that called earlier, said I went to school with Randy. Oh, yes. Randy, can you hear? I sure can, just barely. All right. You went to school, it was in Torrance, California, I think you said. Right. It was. Yeah. 1972. Yeah, well, do you, what's your name? Diane Green. Okay. Does that ring a bell, Randy? Diane Green. God, you know, this isn't fair, but high school seems like so long ago. Does it to you, Diane? Oh, yes, it does. Did you come back to the reunion? Yeah, I was there. God, it seems like ages ago. How big a class How big a class did you have? About 700, I think, wasn't it? It was a large class. Mm -hmm. Right on the football field. Yeah, that was amazing. I think for me, I didn't really hang out with too many people in high school. All right, well, that's what I was figuring. You wouldn't remember me either. We had a couple of, I think we had business class together. Do you remember that? You're, coming, you're making me like feel like 18 again. This is incredible. <laughs> what brought you to Illinois? Can I ask you that? Uh, well, I was originally raised here. I was raised in uh, Wapella. I see. And moved to California in 64. Mm -hmm. And then 
moved back here in 73. So. Oh, I see. And I've run into Randy a couple of times while I was out there with, uh, do you remember Jana Leonard? Yes. Uh, Jana and I and Jerry Meyer ran into you at Hands one night. I do know who you are. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> see, it starts to sink in after a while. Yes, yeah, this is nice. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> Do you have any, uh, any questions for her? No, I've been keeping up on her, though. I see her pictures in the paper and everything. And yeah, we were starting to uh, talk about that this morning, or Stu was. Uh, if there's anybody that you went to school with, you know, that became a famous person, not many people can say that. Well, we also had somebody else, Pam. Do you remember Dave Pack, Ambrosia? Dave Pack? From Ambrosia, the group Ambrosia. Okay. Randy? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. I guess our school did better than we thought, huh? <laughs> I didn't do too well. But <laughs> well, listen, I thank you for calling. Well, thank you. Sure. Bye. Bye-bye. Boy, I didn't have a great connection there, Randy. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Sometimes it fades in and out. Let me take another question from uh, a listener. Do you have a question for Randy? Good morning. I must have the wrong number. I'm sorry. Okay. That's the run, the risk we run. 829-2345 is the number. 17 past 10 o'clock. What kind of modeling did you do? do? Have we seen your pictures and, and those kind of things before, Randy? Oh, let's see. I did a, a lot of different fashion layouts for different magazines, everything from Mademoiselle and Glamour and Coppertone billboards and things like that. So, actually, I, did, I had a blast doing it. I, I traveled to Europe, did bathing suit catalogs, did lingerie ads. Mm -hmm. Basically, had a good time and supported myself for it on nine years. Got to travel around the world and have a lot of time off to play and vacation. It was really a fun living for me. Do you build up a certain amount of confidence? I don't know, maybe you were the kind of a person that was very confident from the very beginning, but I'm thinking, be it an actor, an actress, a model, whatever, you really uh, put yourself out for criticism. Oh, you do. You, you get criticized all the time. It's like you do something that you're real proud of and you open up a newspaper and someone has just, like, smeared you in a review. Yes. And this is this is the thing that that hurts doubly, then. Supposing you act, you're acting without clothes on... <laughs> <laughs> You're really putting yourself out there for criticism, aren't you? Well, that's true. So far, I haven't had anyone say anything bad about me physically. It's just, you know, you, you get into a movie and, and you think the movie is going to be wonderful, and then you look at it in the screening, and all of a sudden you go, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. Yeah. But it's, it's kind of late at that point. At that point, it's far too late. And unfortunately, movies in the old days used to come and go. They'd sort of die. But now with cable TV and with videotape, they're around for years. Yes. I'm thinking, too, this, I don't know why this comes to mind, and I don't mean to be stuck on this uh, business of uh, movie making in the, in the all together, but all, but all of a sudden The Shining comes to mind, and there was a, there was a lady in there who uh, appeared as a vision to uh, Jack Nicholson, uh -huh. and uh, really didn't come across as very attractive. They didn't try to make her look very attractive, but I thought, boy, that really takes something that I sure wouldn't be able to come up with yeah, it does. to act, uh, be in the nude, and come across as a horrible-looking person. Yeah, that would, that would frighten me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that, that my ego is big enough to do that. You know, I'm, I'm like, it's, every time that I go on, it's not that I worry about how I physically look. I always, and, and I never wonder how I'm, I'm acting when I'm acting, but after it's over, I go back to my dressing room and I, I try and relive what I just did, and, and I wonder, God, did I, really, did I do that the way I really wanted to? And usually when I'm driving home, I think of another way I could have done it. Mm -hmm. And it's usually I go, God, I wish I'd have done it that way. You know, I think every actor goes through that, though. Yeah. Part of the, the whole business, of course, is completely out of your hands. It's what the director does with it, what the film editor does with it, and all that. That's very true. It's, it's, you come as an actor to the set with a conception of how to play the character, and all of a sudden the director says, no, mm -hmm. this is how I want it done. And then once you get to the, the editing room, you know, like when we did Tightrope, for a, a perfect example, uh, Tightrope, there were about five girls whose parts were a lot larger than they were once they got to the screen. By the time mine got to the screen, I had great billing in the front of the movie, but what they left in the movie was about 20 words of dialogue and then me walking down the hallway taking off my clothes and being strangled to death. You know, and I thought, where did everything else go? Mm -hmm. But you have no control over that. Yeah. You know, and, and people would come up to me on the street and they go, well, why would you take a part like that? You know, there wasn't a lot to it. Well, when we originally read the script, there was a lot more to it. But once they get it down and they have to edit the story, they take out chunks that you know, they feel don't need to be there. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Is there a big difference between making a movie for the theater versus making a, a TV show, TV movie? 
me out a lot. Uh, a movie for film, you can take a lot of time. Uh, the ones that I've worked on have usually taken between six and 12 weeks. Some take up to six months. And working on TV, I uh, did a movie of the week with Joan Collins, and that lasted 21 days. The time is, is a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. Uh... I guess it's evident, although the finished products usually look pretty good. Usually, usually the thing I notice is probably more the writing. They really churn them out in a lot of cases for TV. Yeah, there's a lot of... It's what we call exposition. It's like everything, all your dialogue, all the things that you have to say in a scene, you're telling a lot of the story in your dialogue. You're not necessarily just talking about your emotions. You're actually moving the plot along. So as an actor, that makes it sometimes a little more difficult to make it sound natural. Mm-hmm. I guess that's, that's true. Saw so a real old Hal Roach production uh, not long ago, and instead of showing a terrific crash that occurred, they just showed the person, and they showed the reaction that they had to this noise. And I think, boy, they really saved a lot, of mi- a lot of money. Not only did they go back to the days of radio where you were actually creating the, the accident in the listener's mind, uh, they actually saved money and were able to turn it out much quicker. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Speaking of days of radio, you've been in this business for how long, did you tell me? Uh, are you going to start interviewing me now? <laughs> I've been here roughly 15 years at this particular station. Uh-huh. And what did you do before that? I was uh, a student at a radio station while going to school. <laughs> so this is what you've always wanted to do? I guess so. Yeah, I really enjoy what I do. And uh, Would you do anything else if you could, if you could change right now? Yeah, that's a good question. Good question. I don't know. I, I don't know of anything that I'd like to do more than this. Isn't that something? That's great, though. Isn't I that mean, being so dedicated and that you enjoy it? Isn't that being in a selfish position? I suppose. No, it means that you're doing the best thing that you could do with your life. If you wake up every morning and you're glad to be at work and you feel like you're accomplishing something, then you're fulfilling that part of your life. It's real fun. I guess it is. I don't know how important it is to the total scheme of the world. Certainly not all that important, but. So you entertain and inform quite a few people out there. I suppose. How about you? You've done the. Uh, would you care to go back to the modeling, or is that sort of <laughs> behind you now? That's a definite no. I absolutely love what I'm doing right now. Okay, modeling isn't that much fun? It's not that it's not that much fun. It's just that that was a, a period of my time that I, uh, of my life that I went through, and, and when you're modeling, you don't really get to use your brain a lot. So you're being much more creative now. Yeah, you know, and, and now it's like, to be honest, it's like working in TV and working in film, I make a lot more money. I, when I work, I work very hard and I'm real dedicated to it. And when I'm off, I have time off to be with my husband, who's also an actor. And if our careers coincide, then we can take time off and travel and be together and, and just generally enjoy life. Mm-hmm. Who's, so, your, who's, your, who's your husband? Who's my husband? His name is Joe Brazen. He's got a movie that's coming out called Means and Ends, probably sometime this summer. So I just got married last year after a kind of a whirlwind two-month courtship. Well, congratulations. Thanks. Yeah. What's next then? What would you like to do, or what don't what don't we know about Randy Brooks from what we've seen so far? Uh, do you sing or I dance? Dramatic side of me yet, only because I wasn't quite ready. I don't think I don't think I was mature enough to really sink my teeth in any of those roles. But I think that I've really learned a lot in the last two or three years as far as my life goes and, and what I do as a person. I think I'm really ready to sink my teeth into something that's dramatic. I've had a good time with comedy. Now I think it's time to move on. Okay. That's interesting. They keep saying that comedy is one of the toughest things to do. Many dramatic actors can do drama. Comedians can do uh, drama, but a lot of dramatic actors can't do comedy. Yeah. I just I sort of fell into comedy. I think it's it's sort of uh, there aren't there aren't that many quote attractive. I don't know what you use for the word attractive, but women who can do comedy. It's like they don't. A lot of women aren't aren't willing to make fun of themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's something that I've never had a problem with. So I, I've always really enjoyed that. It's, for me, it's real easy to make fun of myself, to talk with different voices, to, to walk sort of, you know, strange or nerdy or, or sort of play. I've always enjoyed <laughs> that sort of thing, so it's come easy. Yeah. I think that, again, shows the a certain amount of confidence that you have. Yeah. Self-confidence. And I think also, when I was younger, it, for me, it was a way to hide who I really was. Mm-hmm. Just being another character, really far off base, that you never really knew who I was. Yeah. So now it's like I've gotten real confident with myself and I really like who I am now so now I'm ready to go out and say great let me sink my teeth into something real yeah before we let you go let's do a uh, little bit more on The Last Precinct that's the the new show that uh, either sinks or swims in relatively short time in TV these days <laughs> And I, you know the the glance that I saw, or the you know the I only call it a glance because I only saw one show. It looks like it's very promising. It looks like uh, it's a funny cast. Thanks. We have a wonderful cast. We have uh, Adam West from the old Batman days. 
who is really a talented comedian. And we have Rick Dukeman, who is real strange and crazy. He's a 350-pound comedian who plays a motorcycle cop. Yeah. Um, for all those who like Elvis out there, he's a, an Elvis impersonator. He's a police officer called the King who never wears regulation uniforms, so he has rhinestones underneath his collar. Like <laughs> yes. Uh, we have two two men who are sort of our leads, Jonathan Perpich and Ernie Hudson, who is in Ghostbusters. He was the the black Ghostbuster. So out of the four, he was the, the last one that came and joined in. Yeah. Real talented young guy. They're the only two sane people, if you can call them that on our show. And then, um, as you said before, I played the first transsexual on TV, Mel Brubaker. So we have a real interesting cast. You know? <laughs> yes. Is there gonna, how many are in the can, as it were? We're filming our seventh right now, and we have one more to go. Okay. I got the in inclination or the indication from the first show that uh, there's this problem between the city police and the sheriff's police. Yes, there is. Is that evident in almost every episode? Every episode. Wings Hauser plays our head sheriff. Uh, he's in a long, hot summer and, and quite a few other things. And uh, he's doing a great comedic role here. And he and the sheriff hate the 56th precinct because we're always getting the bus. We're a bunch of misfits and nerds, and we always seem to end up getting the cherries off the trees, as it were. So he's always a little upset. And, and he has a, a wonderful comedic sense, which I never knew, having watched him in a lot of films before. I always thought he was a real sort of serious, dramatic, violent sort of actor. Mm -hmm. He brings such a gentleness and fun to this character. So every episode, that's evident in yeah. Okay. Lots of luck with it. I hope it flies. And, Thank you. And makes it. And good luck to you in your career and, uh, and on the new marriage, too. Thank you very much, Karen. And it's really been a pleasure. You've made this a lot easier than most of them, I'll tell you. <laughs> Super. I enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Bye, Ken. Bye-bye. Randy Brooks, 27 minutes after 10 o'clock in the morning.